Kelly. I'm David. And this is At the Disney Movies with the Hearts. Welcome to our third episode. It is our third episode. And um, this week we watched something I had never heard of before. Neither have I. It's The Adventures of Bullwhip Griffin. Bullwhip, Bullwhip, Bullwhip Griffin. Let billions and ruffians beware. His path never swerved and justice was served when Bullwhip Griffin was there. So this was an interesting one. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. but Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you're not familiar, let's run it down. Okay. So basically the movie opens and there's a butler guy. His name is Griffin. And he's like, he's at a rich like estate in Boston. And the grandfather has died and they're reading his will. That's how it opens, right? Right. And, and jokingly gives all of the servants money. Oh, yeah. The grandpa, he, like, gave all of the money and then was like, haha, actually, I'm broke. And then, like. And then, so they, they, the, the, the main characters are the butler, Griffin. The, the, the boy, Master Jack. And the, the granddaughter who is, like, and Master Jack is 12. Uh, Arabella, who is the other daughter or granddaughter, is closer to Bullwhip's age, which... To Griffin's what? age. He's not Bullwhip yet. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to Griffin's age, which is what, like 20-something? Yeah, Early 20s? I th- yeah, probably. Like, I don't know. They I mean, they look like they're probably almost 40, but they're... I think they they're... do, but I think they're supposed to be... Yeah, they're supposed to be, I think, in their late 20s, probably. Yeah, maybe. I be- well... Don't you think they would have supposed to have been married back in those days yeah, by then? Yeah, because this is back in the California Gold Rush. I think they and were supposed to be in their so, early 20s. That's the whole thing is that once everyone finds out there's no money, then Jack, who's like a, the little boy who's obsessed with gold, decides he's going to run away and go on a ship. And so he stows away and then Griffin goes to try to find him and they both end up on the ship going yes, to California. Through a wacky set of unfortunate circumstances yes and basically then arabella follows them later in the movie to randomly california. to california because they sent her a letter so she decided to go to california because she was losing her house i mean that might have been one of the things that made the most sense in this entire movie yeah um but so then basically they go through the rest of the movie, there's just a bunch of, like, random hijinks that happen, and they're, yeah. in, they're in San Francisco. They're in San Francisco in the surrounding areas trying to get gold, and just every time they get it, they lose it to the same guy. Yeah, he's like this judge guy who, at the very beginning, when... He's no judge. No, he's not a judge, but he calls himself a judge. Mm-hmm. But at, like, towards the beginning of the movie, when, like, the little boy is stowing away, he, like, tricks some guy into, like... Giving up his secret for the mother load. Oh, no, no, no. But before that, he, like, gets oh, the ticket. Oh, he stole the ticket, He stole yeah. the ticket from some guy who paid a bunch of money for it. He, right. like, pickpocketed his ticket, gets on the boat, and then this other guy that they meet, Mr. That was the guy that he met under the dock, which is never oh, really explained right. that that guy also yeah. stowed away and was creepy as, as all get Mr. out. Mr. Bartlett. Mr. Bartlett, yeah. yeah. And he... He was, creep. like, under the dock with the boy, and they both stowed away. But then he revealed he had, like, a secret map to gold, but he never really revealed why he was being stowed away. And later on, he ha- even though he stowed away or got on somehow, yeah, he had, like, a master suite. Yeah, he had, like, his own so suite. So he must have had a ticket, I guess. Yeah. But, but that is very bizarre, the way he followed the little boy under the dock. Yeah, it was a little strange. Yeah. But, so... They but basically yeah they keep losing the money, or the map to like this judge guy, who's just super shysty, and um there's a bunch of random scenes in there where that happens and they run into like Mexican banditos. banditos at one point and um at some point like towards the end of the movie, well actually towards the beginning when they first get in San Francisco, um he knocks out he, this mountain ox yeah fella. I tell you to cut hair! You cut hair! Would you please keep your vulgar hands off my apparel? 
who's Oof. like a, just a big oaf, but he knocked him out because he had like a glove full of money. Full of gold. Which yeah. I missed. I just thought he like knocked him out. Oh no, like, he had the glove full of gold. Okay, That's what he okay. hit him with. Yeah. And so then everyone like wanted them to fight. But then after all these hijinks happen randomly, they get, he comes back and then he agrees to fight this guy to get money to pay <laughs> for them to go home. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the basic synopsis of everything that happens, right? Up until the end, yeah. Up until the end, because well, the I end mean, is yeah. the fight. And then they fight. He wins. They steal all the money that the judge was stealing yet again from somebody else. Yeah, he, like, randomly got a job as, like, the bookkeeper during the fight at the end. Um, to become a master thief. And stole all of the gold, but then they ended up stealing it from him because th- there was a fire that was started and there was a bunch of chaos but so that was the like the overall basic synopsis yeah. but um but this movie oh what, boy what were your overall thoughts or impressions about it it's just ludicrous but it's not really more ludicrous than swiss family robinson like it felt it, no it, it felt not... like like it had that same kind of like i feel like all of these live action movies probably from like the 50s to the 70s are going to be just like this where they're just wacky and stupid at the end they just totally lost the... Because it was actually, like, I was really enjoying it pretty much up until, like, he was training to fight the guy. And then I was he like... Turned, this is... He turned green and knocked the thing out into the... Yeah, he was, like, training to fight the guy. And then they just inserted all these really silly things. But I did actually kind of, like, the very beginning of the movie, the intro where they had the animated sequence. Yeah. Was... And how they kind of kept pulling that back in at random parts. Yeah, that I was did fun. kind of like that. I but do, then I it just like got that. weird at the end of the movie. Like, a little too much. Like, he started bouncing like a cartoon. Yeah. Like, that was yeah. not very believable at all. It's just... It just... Uh, what had been a fairly believable movie really pulled itself out at the end, which was really weird. Yeah, it was really strange. But although at the end in the fight, like, before the fight started, I actually didn't really know how it was going to end. No, no, not at all. I even, like, wrote that down. I was like, I don't know. I really... They really could have just ended up broke or, you know... Or, like, maybe found some other gold somehow at the end or some... Or, like, they still could have gotten that guy's gold. And if he would have lost the fight, it would have been still... That would have, like, almost been better. Yeah. But, uh... I did, like... The um, the haircutting part actually. Yeah, the haircutting part was really good. That's the thing is there was there were a few good scenes in this movie, and most of them were at the beginning. Yeah, like I feel like as soon as they got to the part where the Mexican banditos came, yeah, that was that's when it that was like where the movie turned. And I don't know what point of the movie that was, but basically like they're going up on this like stagecoach to go into the mountains to get gold. It was like one third of the way in. Yeah, the first third of the movie was really, really good. I I felt like like I was actually really enjoying it. Yeah, so was I. And then, yeah, you're right. As soon as the banditos came, which the banditos part was okay. Um, But unfortunately, I don't think in Disney movies you can't kill anyone, right? You can only kill, like, dogs in Old (laughs) Yeller. Uh, Um, No, hey, some people might not have seen that. You might have spoiled that. Okay, (laughs) if you're watching, if you're listening to this ever, uh, there's no such thing as spoilers. Watch movies. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a lot of fun sequences. Like I liked at sort of towards the beginning when they first get on the ship, and then there's the that captain who's basically like a gross, crusty old sea pirate. Yeah, he was perfect. And they like cooked captain all his Swain. food and made it fancy. Yeah, I, li- I liked that part. Um, yeah, it really. The more of a dandy he was. The better the movie was. Oh, yeah. That was the other thing. Because he was super proper. Like, pretty much all throughout the movie. But then he just got kind of ridiculous. Like... He got more cartoonish. Oh, you know what? It, when it was? It was when... So, there was a part where the judge guy, the villain guy, was, like, going to be hanged at some... One of the gold camps. Because people... He was, I'm guessing, stealing from somebody else. And they were going to hang him. But he was supposedly... It was telling everyone he was a dentist. So, they, like tried to help him so they could get the map because they were still looking for the map at this point but then they ended up finding a bunch of gold and yeah. he was like freaking out about the gold that's when it started getting really ridiculous yeah and that was after the bandito part but the gold the gold that was well that was the like pretty much right after. well you know what that might have actually been more when the movie turned 
Because them going to find the coat with the banditos and that guy following them, that was all right. Yeah. And they had the little animated scene. And then, yeah, the Dennis part, I think, actually might have really been where it turned into a just dumb. Yeah, because I didn't mind the dentist part, but it was after that, like... Yeah, when... I haven't minded the dentist part. I don't Let know. Let him kill that guy. Uh, I mean, that is true. Because that guy is... He just kept showing up. It was ridiculous. I mean, I do like the honor of our butler, our... Our he did honor whip. his word. That came up a couple times. Well, he and he was just he stuck to his uh, his own just personal honor all the time, which is nice to see since it doesn't exist anymore. Um, and actually, the kid was not annoying. A uh, shockingly not which annoying. Which is strange because usually most of these movies, a lot of the kids are really, really annoying. annoying. And neither was the gal. The gal was pretty good. She was, like, I think actually my favorite character. She had a lot of personality, and yeah. she wasn't, like, some delicate she definitely flower. Had, she definitely had some brass to her. Her name was Arabella, right? Arabella, yeah. Yeah, she was just, I don't know, she had a lot more personality, and she was definitely very uh, uh, strong-willed Yeah. and got her own way. Um, cause yeah, I even wrote that, that she has a lot more personality and originality <laughs> and more of an actual character. This one, I think compared to like the last movie we watched, I think this one the Swiss family Robinson. had better characters. Oh f- yeah. Well, people had a little bit of depth in this movie that did not exist in Swiss family Robinson. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, well just, yeah. And this one had a theme song. Bull whip. Oh, whip. yeah, the the music in this one was fun. It was stupid, but it was fun. Yeah, it was. Uh, it actually had something that you can remember. It was more entertaining than I thought it was going to be. But you definitely, there's just no movies like this anymore. No, because... The, the end was really a killer, though. Like, it really, yeah. they just did not have an ending for this movie, and they based it on that fight, which was dumb. It was not entertaining. No, because he just, like, danced around. Basically, because the ox, the mountain ox guy is this huge guy. Nobody don't call no names on mountain ox. Yeah. And so the bullwhip guy. Oh, and he got his name Bullwhip because the kid was, like, oh, yeah. the first time he knocked the ox guy out. He's like, his name is Bullwhip. Um, but that's why it's called Bullwhip Griffin. But he um, was just dancing around the whole time, like, and the guy was just being stupid and, and bouncing and doing like ballet moves and stuff. Yeah, it was not very fun or funny. But he did get punched in the first round and then she kissed him and he came back to life. Well, actually that happened twice in the fight. She kissed yeah. him and he came back. The little cupid flew across the screen and he came back yeah. to life, which was just ridiculous. Well, and when she knocked him out earlier while they were training, that also happened. Oh, did it? Yeah, she Knocked him out. No, I remember that, but I forgot that she kissed him then. I forgot about that. Oh, okay. So that's how. That's why she knew that that would work, I guess. But then yeah. I also don't know why he didn't just... Because when they were training and he punched like the punching bag really hard because he was like... Yeah, I thinking... was really expecting that she was going to go over to that guy and make him jealous so that he'd knock out the mountain ox and that didn't happen. That would have been like a better That's what I was expecting. Ending. It would have been at least like something. Yeah, but then like the Mount Knox guy, the she he's just like, okay, I'll do whatever you say. Like after the fight, like I think that's a a, a trope of of dumb people in these older movies. Well, what so the story we both agree was probably it was good at first. It wasn't a good story though no. overall. No, I mean, did you it had no real? It, it, really didn't have much of a plot after that first third of the movie it was just kind of that's true like it kind of felt almost yeah like um not like a three stooges type thing but or it felt like um like you know did you ever watch rocky and bullwinkle like where they're like or any of those old cartoons were like oh we got to avoid the bad guys yeah like like it's all about that judge guy really yeah and it kind of all felt um felt very cartoony yeah. so the story was not great the music was okay yeah, like was we both right. enjoyed the theme song yeah um i think the characters are probably the strongest yeah part the characters are the strongest part is 
good characters. I'm surprised that neither of us have ever heard of this. I've never heard of it. Although I do know that I'm pretty sure the guy who voiced Mr. Bartlett, the creepy weird guy that was like their friend, he's the voice, was that actor is the voice of the caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland. It's entirely possible. Um, Cause that came out around the similar time as this, I think. No, Alice in Wonderland's like way before this. Oh, I don't know, but it's the same guy. The voice is the same. But is there, do you have anything else that you want to add about this movie? With this movie, not so much. It was just like, kind of weird. It was just, it was strange. It was old school. There was a lot of whack to it and not a lot of... Substance. Substance. Like, it was just wackadoodle, which is fine. But it wasn't like, I don't know, I enjoyed Swiss Family Robinson more than this one. Yeah, but probably, quite a bit. probably. And, yeah, there was just a lot of things that bumped you in this. Like, him carrying around that umbrella yeah, all the why time. Why was he carrying an umbrella? Like, constantly. And did they even have umbrellas back then? Like... Uh, I don't know. Probably. Probably, but it must have just been like a durable good. But he like insisted on having that umbrella. And he's in California. Well, although San Francisco, I mean, you could see having an umbrella kind of, but there was never raining, so. Yeah, but I just don't. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't buy it. I don't. I'm not a fan. So what do you think, if it had a Rotten Tomatoes score, what do you think it's it would be? It's probably going to have one. No, it'll have one, but what do you think it would be? What do I think it would be, or what would I rate it? No, but what do you think it I would be? I bet the Rotten Tomatoes score, just because I bet a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for this. Are you looking it up? I'm going oh, to. Oh, but we have to look at our, do our own scores no, first. No, I know. Because we understand. decided that we should yeah, rate it independently. I understand. I understand. But I bet Rotten Tomatoes is going to be somewhere in like the 75 to 78 range. Eh, I'll, I'll say that's probably true. But, oh, so real quick before, so did this movie, this movie was not at all what we thought it was going to be. I was close, but he was not a, any kind of authority figure. No, because you said but Western. But I said, it, I, and I, well, and I said it would be super wackadoodle. Which it was, but like, I, th- I thought it was going to be more like old school, like Billy the Kid type feel, like. Well, it's still Old West, well, just yeah, different Old West. It was more about like. The Gold Rush. It's all, I don't know. It just was different than I thought it was going to be. But, um, but if I, so if I was going to give it a score, which I would, you are, well, yeah, of course I am. No. I'm going to give it a 65. Like mm. I, I, it's low, but I would never watch this again willingly. No. Yeah. We might make our kids watch it as punishment. No, I wouldn't even make my kids. There's nothing, there's nothing truly like redeeming, like, oh my God, you got to see this movie unless uh, although, uh, let me add one, just one little off thing. Why does he have an English accent if he grew up in Boston? I don't know. And... I was thinking about that the whole time. Yeah. Like, so, well, but I why mean... do none of them have Bostonian accents? Yeah, that, well, that's fine. I don't mind that. That might be a newer thing, but for him to have an English accent, ridiculous. Correct, sir. Yeah, because that's right, because he grew up with the... In Boston. Oh, yeah, and how did, like, he went, like... She and he was grew up with Arabella. Arabella. Oh, and where are their parents, by the way? Are their parents just dead, too? Because well, it was their grandfather that died. Back then, you know, parents and people died pretty easily. I mean... But they... Arabella and Griffin, they, like, went to school together because she was like, oh, do you remember at your birthday party when you threw the serving tray out the window and you said, I'll never be a butler? Does that mean he got, like, a serving tray for a birthday present? I don't know. Maybe. Or... And the the little kid said that he gave Arabella a locket in the sixth grade that she still carried. Yeah, so I mean, he did grow up there. Yeah, I mean, they grew up together. But it was like, clear. how did he become her butler? He was the old man's butler, because his his father was a butler before. No, remember? I know, but like, I'm just thinking back when she said the line about his birthday party. Like, did he, they give him a serving tray as like a birthday present? Like, oh, now you're going to train to be a butler. I don't know. It's possible. It was weird. It was a, I don't know. That was a weird, uh, weird thing. But so wait, what rating did you say you were going to give this movie? Sixty-five. Sixty-five. You are quite generous, sir. I agree. I, I, I... am going to give this movie a fifty-two yeah, okay, percent because I, re- I. It's not that I hated it. I have been generous, and I feel bad about that because every single time. 
I've wanted to go back and lower my score, especially with Coco. I wish I would have given Coco like sixty-five. Because I, I, I would didn't, watch. I, didn't hate this movie. I would watch Swiss Family Robinson again just to make fun of it and just for the fun of it. Yeah. But I didn't, I, I didn't hate this. That's the thing is I didn't hate it. I don't ever want to see it again. It just was, didn't have any substance, and it was just yeah. weird. Like I enjoyed some of the characters. Like I actually did enjoy Griffin's character. Yeah, Griffin was a great character. And I didn't hate the little boy. He wasn't no. annoying. No. And I actually, but the chick was my favorite character actually, because she was like saucy and sassy and saucy, sassy and brassy. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Pull up a chair, boys. You're welcome to stare, but open your pokes, boys, and pay for the fare. So you you gave it sixty five. I give it fifty two. Let's is there see. any final thoughts? Oh, what does Rotten what Tomatoes say about it? Ooh. 43. 49. Oh I my... told you it's not good. Oh, my gosh. Wow. So what are are above. Is, is there any comments in the Rotten Tomatoes? Oh, I don't know if we need to get into all that. No, just like what does like a bad one say? Nothing to upset the kids. Little to interest grown-ups. <laughs> Pleasant low-key adventure comedy. <laughs> Pleasant, low-key adventure comedy. Uh, Any final thoughts at all? No whip, no whip, Griffin. That might be the bumper at the top. The theme song. We'll see. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and you know, just bear with us while we're working this out. Um. I don't know. I think we had a lot of good stuff to say about it, considering there was literally no substance. Let's go ahead and pick another movie. Number 144. Okay. So it's more, we're getting like more modern. Yeah, which is very odd. Uh, I'm nervous. You're nervous A about 144. Bit, yeah. Because, oh no. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's Herbie Goes Bananas. Herbie Goes Bananas? Wait, yeah. Is that the car? I think so. Like the... 1980. Herbie Goes Bananas? So I'm betting that there's a monkey involved with Herbie. Probably. I, I, I think the, isn't the original one called like the love bug or something? I have no idea. Because I'm pretty sure, because like Lindsay Lohan made some modern movie where it was like Herbie fully loaded. I'm pretty sure the original movie is the love bug and it's like a car. Wait, you, so you haven't, you don't know anything about this, right? Well, I know that Herbie is a car. I think it's a, a Volkswagen bug. Yeah. And it has like racing stripes on it yeah and there's another one there's herbie rides again so the love bug might be the initial movie i'm pretty sure it is because i think i've seen that okay as a child i don't remember anything about it but i think there's like crime side crime solving involved somewhere don't really know oh boy that's all i can say wait what is it herbie goes bananas herbie goes bananas so there has to be a monkey involved probably like i think you're probably right on that because it's pretty on the nose there's gonna be a lot of these old movies yeah but i'm actually kind of excited because i feel like it really it's gonna broaden our cultural references oh my god we could really do a killing on some sort of like old school jeopardy type of thing (laughs) of disney movies if we watch all these movies yeah oh boy well until next time which will be herbie goes bananas and If you want to follow along, you can watch the movies, too, and send us a message or leave us comments. It's it's Apple Apple Podcasts Podcasts. now or Google Podcasts. Or wherever you listen to this. If you listen to podcasts, you know exactly what to do and when to do it if you want to do it. Yep. So. I'm Kelly. I'm David. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.